Most modern applications on Windows come with a recently used file menu. This is a menu that lists a batch of documents that you used recently so that you can click a name in the list to reload the document. I'm Hugh and in this video I'll show you a really simple way of adding a recently used file menu to your own applications. So without more ado, let's get started. Now over the past few videos I've shown how to create an application launch pad. Here it is, so you drag on some files from the Windows File Explorer and then you can click them to launch them. In this video I'm going to show you how to create this recent file menu. So you can see here are various different configurations of the application icons that I've loaded previously and if I want to reload any then I just click one and up it pops and another one and then I click it to uh, launch it. These are the sort of recently loaded file menus that you would expect in most applications. For example, in Visual Studio, you've got a similar thing where you click up your file and you've got the recent projects and solutions. Okay, so how do I create that? Well, first of all, I've had to add this uh, extra recent files item on the drop-down menu. And then let's go into the code. Now, Right at the top here, you can see that I've added this new rec file string. Rec file is the path, get directory name, application, executable path, and recfile.sav. It's just a text file where I will save the list of recently loaded application icon items. So let's have a look what's in it. So here I can see that this is my recfile.sav. It's simply path names. Each text file here, videos.txt, music.txt, and programming.txt, it's a list of paths to the icons on each of the configurations that I've saved. It's a list of these icons, and uh, recfile.sav just reloads them when I click one of the recently loaded file menu items. Let's have a look how I've done this in code. First of all, I save the recently loaded file list when the form is closed. Save rec files. That's this method up here. It simply goes through the recently loaded file menu, drop down items count, and uh, writes a new line into the recfile.sav text file. So let's have a look again to remind you what it's writing. So it's writing one of these lines, such as this one here, into the text file. And it does that for each of the drop down items on my recently loaded file list. You could, if you wanted, create a much shorter path when you're displaying the files on the file menu. Instead of having this full path, you could just put, you know, videos.txt, etc. at the end. I've shown how to deal with paths in previous lessons, so that's something you could do if you wished. Now, up here, when the form is loaded, it looks to see if the file, the recently saved file menu exists, recfile.sav. If so, it loads the files. Load rec files just goes through the strings in recfile.sav and reads the lines in one at a time and then it adds each of those paths to this lines, this list of, of strings and finally once that's been populated it just adds each of those items to the file menu. I've limited it four files in the menu. Again, you could change that if you wished to add more. And then it adds a file menu item for each of the paths read from recfile.sav. Importantly, also it adds an event handler so that when you click that file name, the file associated with it, the configuration file will be open. What this does is it gets the text of the drop-down list item and assigns that to this variable, string variable fn. Then it gets a file info. I've explained that in previous lessons. And uh, it assigns that to this fi uh, object. And then if that exists, if the file indicated exists, 
then it just loads that file, load config, and I've explained that in earlier uh, videos. Let me quickly go through this uh, text, this whole set of code, so if you've missed anything, you can stop the video and check that uh, if you're writing this code that you've done everything that I have. So most of this you've seen from previous lessons in this series, and here you can just check that all the code is as you expect it to be. Now, again, I haven't done very much error checking in this. If paths are incorrect, if files don't exist, if you're trying to uh, modify something that you haven't got the rights to modify, if the icons can't be found, all sorts of things can go wrong because I, I've tried to keep this code as simple and clean as possible but uh, you can modify that in your own time. The important thing to note here is how simple it is to create a recently launched file menu and attach event handlers to it. Let me just show you how the event handler is actually called. So this is the event handler associated with each menu item. So let me bring up the form, click one of the items, recent files, uh, click this item and here you can see that the file name here is the text of the item I actually clicked and that's how this then tries to load the configuration file which I selected. There are of course lots more things you could do to improve on this. For example, currently the new file items are only added to the menu when I load a program group configuration file from disk but maybe you would want to add a file item whenever a configuration file is saved. And you might also want to check for duplicates so that you don't add the same file twice and so on. There really are lots of possibilities that you could explore. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And to be notified whenever I upload new videos, subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon. And I hope I'll see you again soon.